Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Yes, he's here. I teased this yesterday <laughs> in my live stream that we may have the one and only Pace Morby on the show. I kind of hesitated because today is Mother's Day. Shout out all the moms. Uh, but we are here. Pace, man, how you doing? Bro, it's been a long time coming. I've already been on, on your live twice, and yes. I always get good feedback. People always say, hey, get back on Zuber's show. You've been on Wholesale Hotline, or you've been on Sunday Service with us. You've done stuff with me and Cody, and Cody um, constantly references your stuff to me. And uh, we respect you tremendously. We're grateful for the friendship, and you're doing such a great job, and um, we I love it. That. Thank you for having me. I appreciate that. I do see lots of synergies. I do believe we both have uh, good hearts, uh, amazing work ethics, and uh, we are just, we're trying to improve people's lives. So that I see lots of similarities. Uh, to that end, I want to I want to kind of poke at something that I've seen you talk about, uh, I want to say the last 60 days, that honestly, mm -hmm. I've done no research on. It's like, it hit my radar and I'm like, I'm going to dig in, I'm going to dig in. But hey, I got you here. So I'm just going to do it with you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you've, started, you've started to talk about a position, something that uh, you call gator lending. Uh, yeah. So I just want to ask, give me the 101. What is it? You're excited about it. Uh, but yeah, let's start there. All right. So here's what gator lending is. It's five things. It's essentially to sum it down. It's you bringing a resource to someone else's transaction and you getting a chunk of that transaction. Okay. Got it. So that resource could be a variety of things. Um, okay. Number one, it could be the earnest money. What we found is about 85% of, I own title and escrow companies. And so we see a lot of transactions and we get to do our own data analysis off what wholesalers bring to the table. We find out about 85% of wholesalers don't even have a thousand dollars to open up escrow with their earnest money. Wow. So okay. what I've been doing for years is funding their earnest money as a micro lender and taking a chunk out of their assignment. So let's say that that wholesaler goes, hey, I don't have $1,000. My seller is asking for proof of receipt that I've deposited my EMD. Mm -hmm. And I have 10 days during my inspection period, but I have to deposit my earnest money day one to open escrow. Right. Otherwise, I'm technically in breach of my own contract. Mm -hmm. So I go, no problem. As long as you use my contract and, you know, they're, they're, we're in a state that allows for, uh, you know, if I'm in my inspection period and you can't find a buyer, I cancel or you cancel on day nine and I get my thousand dollars back, I'll fund that money all day long. Sure. So that wholesaler goes and finds a buyer. They make a $15,000 assignment fee, let's say that's kind of the national average. Hmm. And I will typically take a $3,000 chunk of their $15,000 assignment fee. So once they close escrow on the settlement statement, I will, it will be shown that I am JVing with them on the deal. Mm -hmm. So I get my thousand dollars back plus $3,000 in return. Where a lot of this, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I'll tell sure. you the other things, but um, where the, a lot of this started was when I was a contractor, Michael, I had a lot of subcontractors that worked for me. We became friends. We'd go have tacos together on the weekends. And I had one of them named Ruben Dominguez that was one of my painting contractors. So he would paint for me, but he would paint for other customers as well. And sometimes those customers would give him a check on Friday at four o'clock and the bank wouldn't clear that check and he couldn't pay his payroll on Friday night. So he would call me and go, Pace, I need $6,000 to cover the remaining part of my payroll until Monday. Mm -hmm. And I go, yeah, no problem. What would you pay me? He goes, I'll pay you three grand. I go, oh, okay. Yeah. Never argued. Yeah, no, yes. <laughs> yes. And the reality is most lenders, so like, you know, your audience might listen to this and go, wow, that's insane. That's a 50% return. Actually, no, it's not a 50% return. It's something like a 3,000% return annualized because oh, if I just God. continue to do that over and over and over, it's insane. Mm -hmm. um, so they go, why would, why would somebody do that? Well, because when you're in a pinch, when you need something, most lenders are not even going to look at a $6,000 loan. Because what's their return on that for three days at 10% or 12%? 15 bucks? It's not yeah. worth their time. Exactly. Doesn't even cover the wire fee. So um, Ruben would pay me. And um, this went on for probably a good year until Ruben really stabilized his own business and got enough cash flow. But in that first year with Ruben and a couple of other contractors I was doing these little micro loans for, mm -hmm. um, you know, I had collateral like generators and trucks and other things like that that would protect my money because there's somebody in your audience who has a fear 
of like losing anything. They go, oh, oh my gosh, why would I loan something to somebody? Well, guys, these people had collateral. Right. Just like wholesalers have collateral. They have a, an open contract that I can wedge myself into. Mm -hmm. So after about a year of doing that, I realized I made about $300,000 in one year off just little micro loans, 300 grand. I was like, dude, I made, I made freaking 25% of what I made as an entire contractor yeah. by just doing micro loans. So I never called it gator lending, but it was always like something I did and mm -hmm. I never shared it out in the world because at that time I didn't have an audience and I didn't know how powerful it could be to share a message and share something you can make money with. And then people would actually take it mm -hmm. and do something with it. It's insane. Like, I, I was so used to at the time just giving advice to friends and family that would never do anything with anything I told them. So I just learned never to share. Yeah. It wasn't until I started being on social media that I was like, holy crap, people take this stuff. Yeah, they yeah. do <laughs> things with it. This is amazing. Yeah. People are like making a crap ton of money. This is amazing. So um, that's one thing you can do. So when I jumped into wholesale, I started going to RIAs and I started, you know, networking with wholesalers. And I'd say, hey, you know, anything you need in this business, just text me. I'm here for you. And um, I would get wholesalers who would say, I don't have my earnest money, but my seller's calling the title company mm. and they're asking for a receipt of the, the EMD. And I go, no problem. So I train people. I'm doing this for free, by the way. I'm not right. charging for this. And so th this crazy frenzy that's going on um, with all these gators that are learning how to do this are people are making a shit ton of money right now just doing micro loans for wholesalers. Yeah. And what's also, so that's one thing. The first thing you can do as a, um, Gator, Let me pull, I'll pull it up here. Hopefully this will help people kind of visualize this. So the first thing that I'm teaching is EMD, small loans. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, obviously there's paperwork. I'm training people with, I'm bringing my attorney in and showing you how to protect yourself so you don't lose money and all that kind of stuff. And um, you can start with anywhere between a thousand to $3,000. Cool. Now, Michael, the main thing that I'm trying to do with Gator Lending is I'm trying to figure out what is the magic pill for every individual human being that can get their damn hands on a transaction somehow, some way. Mm -hmm. Because your message is powerful. My message is powerful, right? Creative finance or one rental at a time. But not everybody, it doesn't, it's not that it doesn't fit everybody. And it doesn't work for everybody. It's that some people's personalities and some people's like individual mindset issues that they're currently stuck in mm -hmm. won't allow them to take big leaps. Mm -hmm. And so for years, I've been thinking, how do I come up with something that the every man can get their hands on a transaction, see how the paperwork works, mm -hmm. make a couple thousand dollars without ever having to find the buyer or the or the seller and just wedge themselves in by providing some sort of small amount of value with a very high return. Mm. So I came up with Gator Lending, okay? And so that's the first thing. And I'm really, like Gator Lending, why people are going crazy about it and you're starting to hear it from the peripheral is because one, I, am ta I was talking about it on social media, but now people are starting to go everywhere in Facebook groups and look for these opportunities and mm. they're helping wholesalers who are stuck with no EMD. Um, the second thing that you can do with the Gator Lending, what I'm teaching, is um, double closing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what I think is going to happen in wholesaling, and you're starting to see this with um, Jerry Norton talking mm -hmm. about this a lot more, is that wholesaling is going to become incredibly regulated over the next five years. Yes. Um, in the state of Arizona, we just passed a law that states you as a wholesaler are required to tell your seller verbally and on paper that you are a wholesaler and you intend to wholesale their property. Mm -hmm. So what does that do to a wholesaler? That destroys the entire guise or the shroud or the veil that you're putting over the transaction of I'm the buyer right. and I need a 10 day inspection period. And so it, and it basically hurts so many wholesalers. So what's going to happen is you're going to see a lot more transactional funding. Yep. And for anybody in the audience that doesn't know what transactional funding means, it means that now that wholesaler, let's say they're talking to the seller, right? Here's the seller, here's the wholesaler, and you've got a contract between these two human beings. What ends up happening is that this wholesaler here has to close escrow. They have to purchase this. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they then are no longer the wholesaler. They become the buyer. Yep. Yep. They become the owner for a minute. They yep. become the owner, even if it's for an hour. Correct. Okay. So then that wholesaler 
has a buyer already lined up who is then going to have a new. Um, now that that wholesaler becomes the seller. Mm -hmm. They take the place of the seller. They have a new contract. Mm -hmm. And there's essentially two transactions that can happen almost simultaneously. Transaction number two, transaction number one. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem there is that most wholesalers don't have the capital to fund this first leg of the transaction. Correct. And so what I'm teaching people is how to go build corporate credit mm -hmm. to be able to go out and do these types of um, transactional lending or to team up with each other. And so I'm, what a lot of things are happening is inside of my sub two community, a lot of these gators, I'll call them, mm -hmm. are teaming up with e each other and going, hey, I have 25 grand, you have 25 grand, this person needs $65,000 to double close. So um, the other day I just did one. This was really, really cool. And this is the benefit to the wholesaler. So I've got a wholesaler that, um, oops, I've got a wholesaler. It comes to me and he goes, hey, Pace, I've got a um, buyer already lined up, but I don't want my, even if this is not illegal, this mm -hmm. is where the benefit is. Mm -hmm. I don't want my buyer knowing how much money I'm making and I don't want my seller knowing how much money I'm making. Right. Okay. So what happened is the, the wholesale contract here is five lots for $25,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I didn't know this because I didn't know what the contract was on the back end, but there, there's this contract over here that is four lots for $50,000. Hmm. Essentially what this wholesaler did right here, super smart. This is the power of real estate guys. It's freaking unbelievable. This person closed on this contract right here for $25,000, but didn't have the $25,000 at that point. Mm -hmm. So I came in, I loaned the $25,000 that came from me. I sent that money to title. I mm -hmm. sent the 25,000 and it was on a Wednesday. And then that I'd say about six hours later, his buyer came through and bought four of those lots for 50. Mm. So it ended up happening out of that $50,000, I ended up getting my $25,000 back. I ended up all, also getting $5,000 back. At, this is my profit on the deal. Correct. So he ended up walking away with $20,000 in his pocket, plus a free lot, which he's going to build on. <laughs> Love that. Very creative. Very cool. This just happened last week. Nice. So um, he didn't have the 25 grand to make that transaction happen. And so doing that, I didn't have to find the seller. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to find the buyer. And I made 5,000 freaking dollars <laughs> in literally 12, 12 hours. That, I, I sent the money on a Wednesday. I got the money back on that same exact Wednesday. That's amazing. Pretty cool, right? So yeah. transactional funding, that's not something that I've created. Um, I've just made it more accessible to the every man. And I'm teaching people, how do, how do you go get this 25 grand and so I'm teaching people how to raise capital, how to partner with each other to create transactional lending, like micro businesses and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Then a third thing that I'm currently doing is I'm teaching people how to do the wedge. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, again, you know, I used this resource right here, the 25 grand to gain this chunk. Correct. And th this, I gain, I use this little resource to gain this chunk, right? Mm -hmm. Get it. So here okay. in the wedge situation is that a lot of times I'll find a buyer that says, I need um, a, oh man, a variety of things. There's so many different things buyers need. Mm -hmm. um, but I've got a buyer right now that is doing the burr. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so they go, hey, I need transactional funding or not transactional funding, but I need a gap lender for um, essentially $75,000. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I go, no problem. I come along and I go, I don't even want to, I don't want to be the gap lender, but I'll bring, what, if I bring a gap lender to you, will you give me 30% equity in your deal? Interesting. Okay. And they go, yeah, if you can find me a gap lender that will get, just give us, you know, temporary money for three to six months while mm -hmm. we, you know, buy the property, renovate it, re mm -hmm. you know, rent, uh, rehab, or I'm sorry, um, rent it out and then refinance it out and they get their 75 grand back. I will leave you in as 30% owner of that property. Okay. Okay. So yep. I've wedged myself into this. 
Last month, I did 12 of these. Wow. 12. And the total equity, not equity, it's not real equity yet, but my total um, ownership is about $1.57 million that I gained on my balance sheet because I found gap lenders that were willing to come to the table. And these buyers who are saying, man, I need help. Mm -hmm. I need a resource and I don't know how to raise capital. All I did was bring a resource that wasn't even my resource to the table. Right. And I wedged myself in and gained 30% of their deal. Hmm. Actual wow. ownership yep. on the LLC, voting rights, control. I get the appreciation. I get the depreciation. I get the cash flow. I, I'm a partner on the deal. Okay. Yep. Um, I've got another deal. Uh, so that's the wet, that's the wedge, right? Wedging yep. myself in between. I'm not the gap lender. I'm not the buyer. I didn't have to sponsor the loan. I didn't have to put my credit out there. I didn't have to do anything other than bring the gap lender to the table. So I brought this resource to the table and I got 30% ownership of it. Pretty freaking crazy. When you think about that, mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Crazy bonkers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another one is now this is where it's getting a little bit more, um, advanced, but this is where I will sponsor hmm. uh, people. I will sponsor people. So let's say I've got a buyer and the buyer says, well, I need to do the bird strategy or I'm doing a flip. I really will only do flips for people that have done like 25 or more flips. So that's a little bit more advanced strategy, but sure. somebody that comes along with the burr and for whatever reason they can't get qualified. Okay. okay. Uh huh. I will sponsor their loan. This is not something that the beginner can do, right? So the beginner, easy to do the EMD, right? Very easy. So people are just, I, I have so many people that have never done a real estate deal. I, Jamil and I were just in Texas this last week and we probably met close to a thousand people face to face between Boise, Idaho, Houston, Austin, Dallas. And I wow. don't, I, I can't tell you, probably 50, 60 people came up to me and they're like, I've been watching your free Gator training and I just did my first EMD loan and I made $3,000. I have been trying to get into real estate for two years. Love it. And it wasn't until you taught this strategy that I realized I could get my hands on a transaction and actually get started with very, very little risk. So there's the low hanging fruit. So yeah. the people that are like, oh man, the wedge and the sponsor and these types of things, those are more advanced strategies. Yeah, guys, they are, but yeah. you can start in here and you mm -hmm. can work your way towards it. So what I did, um, just recently, I have a five plex in Dallas where two individuals go, Hey, we, um, we can't get qualified for the Burr loan. We're not qualified because a lot of times what a lender is looking for is they're looking for liquidity. Yep. For anybody that doesn't know what liquidity means, it means that you have cash sitting in your bank or Bitcoin sitting in a Coinbase thing that I can liquidate within 24 hours and I can cover a loss or something like that. So you have to have liquidity, okay? Liquid cash, which I have, which is nice. Um, you also have to have good credit, mm -hmm. which I have, which is nice. You also have to have um, history of bank statements or to show that you have active business going on. So a lot of people that are newer, right? Mm -hmm. These people are not going to have all of those resources. So I come to the table, I show my liquidity, I show my credit, I show my history of bank statements, et cetera. And I just became a 50% ownership on this deal for sponsoring their loan. Hmm. I didn't bring any money to the table. I literally just sponsored the loan. Now, what's great about this, Michael, is that I am 100% owner on paper for the first year. Mm. And after they perform, they manage the property properly. I then will um, deed over 50% of the property over to them or will amend the existing LLC. Um, so I, I'm protected. They have to perform all that kind of stuff. But I am just going around sponsoring other people's loans. I don't have to find the deal. I don't have to manage the deal. I don't have to bring the money to the table. These guys actually already had the capital. They already had the, the gap, they had the construction money, they had everything, but they could not qualify for their lender's loan. Interesting, okay. Okay. Yeah. The fifth, the fifth one is a little bit more tricky. It's in the multifamily space. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this one's great. Um, very similar to, the, to four, but what happens in the multifamily space is people need um, sponsors for loans as well. Mm -hmm. And so what I, just did is I got part ownership of a 75 unit multifamily 
because I literally just have a balance sheet, I have liquidity, mm -hmm. and I have net worth. What happens in multifamily is they want to see the net worth equal yep. to the loan amount. Correct. Okay, so I can loan up to, I can go and qualify for a loan, and I can get 10%, 15% of an entire 75 unit multifamily deal by literally just showing my net worth on paper, mm -hmm. showing my documents, showing my liquidity, showing my bank statements, and I sponsor the loan, and I get set, I, here's the great thing, it's a non-recourse loan, no personal, right. no, nothing, no risk to me, and I can come in here and have 10 to 15% ownership of those things. So I'm showing people how these things are done and I'm bringing in the lenders. Like I actually didn't know I could do this until I had a buddy at Marcus Millichap, mm -hmm. really big lender to Grant Cardone uses. A lot of the big boys use Marcus yep. Millichap to go get sure. their loans. Um, I have a buddy that works at Marcus Millichap that was like, you know, we get a lot of people that apply for multifamily loans and they find out they have to have a net worth requirement and they go, oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, no. Yeah. There's a lot of people sponsoring or, or what basically become in the balance sheet, right? The Right. The, yeah. Have it's that crazy. Net worth. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. So, so you just go, you go to a Marcus Millichap or other lenders that do the same thing and you go, Hey, I, now a lot of people in the audience, I've narrowed this, right? So number one, Gator lending, anybody can do that. Correct. You can quadruple your money every single month, which is great. Um, and then you can move on and get into transactional funding, then you can move on as you go, whatever. So it's an, it's a sliding scale, yeah. but I'm just teaching people and there's several other things as well, but those are kind of the main five. Yeah. There are so many examples. I've got a guy right now that I'm making 10 grand off. He goes, Hey, I am buying my personal house and I don't have <clears throat> all the down payment that I need. I need an extra $10,000. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. This is a crazy story. And I can't wait to show this on my YouTube channel, but he's like, I need $10,000. I've overspent on like future furniture and the barbecue in the backyard and whatever else. I'm missing $10,000 to close. If you can give me that $10,000 to finalize my, my purchase on my house, I'll give you 25 grand that I have coming to me and blah, 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 whatever. Mm. So I have to verify where that 25 grand is coming from. Is that real? Cause you get a lot of whatever and it's all legit. And he, um, it basically is another real estate transaction that he thought would close fast enough that he right. could use the the money for his personal home. And he, it didn't, it got pushed by a couple of weeks because of whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So it got, got pushed. I called, verified that that transaction is moving forward. I'm like, yeah, I'll give you, ten, I'm going to give you 10 grand. <laughs> and in 20 days, I'm going to get my 10 grand back plus 25 grand uh, all day long. Give yeah. do that all day long. No. Yeah. No question. So it's just stuff like that. It's, Essentially where it comes from is just trying to figure out how can the every man, every woman get their hands on a real estate deal. Um, and there's another thing I'm doing behind the scenes that I haven't started talking about where I get so many wives, right? Hmm. Speaking of Mother's Day, and you get yeah. this as well. People in your audience go, how do I get my wife involved in my business? How do I get my wife to support me? How do I get my wife to care about this? Well, here's what I'm doing. I have hired four people full time. I've hired a syllabus creator. I've hired a graphic designer. I hired a transaction coordinator. I hired a loan modification and short sell specialist. And what we're doing right now is we're going and we're building a full transaction coordinator course hmm. so that a woman or a married couple can have the real estate investor and the transaction coordinator. Wow. And the transaction coordinator, which is cool. So a lot of these wives are like, how do I get into the business without being an agent? Because a lot mm -hmm. of the, the simple answer is like, well, go become an agent and then you can list his properties, right? Right. That's what most people think. And I'm like, that's a little bit too challenging. Why don't we teach people how to go out into the re regular real estate world? And let's say that I'm in Fresno, California. Mm -hmm. I could go to Fresno, California as a transaction coordinator. Somebody understands how to do the paperwork on a real estate transaction. And I can tell all the wholesalers, all the real estate investors, hey, I'll give you your first transaction for free just to show you how good I am at transaction coordinator, uh, coordination, build up a book of business and a big clientele of 100 or 200 people that, you know, are utilizing your services. Mm -hmm. And most, most people are like, yeah, that's cool. You know, how much can you charge for that? Well, um, my transaction coordinator makes $22,000 a month working for other people. Not for me. That's not bad. But working for other people, $22,000 a month. But most more important than that, 
Mm. What we found is that our easiest way to JV with other wholesalers in our local market was having our transaction coordinator providing value to them on their other real estate transactions so that we get a first look at every single deal that they have. Yes. So it's essentially just how can I teach people these creative ways um, to insert myself into a deal, get my mm -hmm. wife in involved in the business. Maybe I don't have the tenacity to go and cold call sellers. Maybe I don't have the, what it takes to go out and build an entire acquisition team like a Carlos Reyes, who at one point had 45 employees on an acquisition team. Wow. Maybe that's not me, but can I lend a thousand dollars of earnest money um, and get $3,000 back in a week and go, oh my gosh, I'm going to start building this up. Utilize that money for a down payment on my first rental or whatever it is. So essentially why people are so excited about Gator Lending is because I'm doing it for free and I'm teaching people how to insert themselves into a real estate transaction, even if you're not a superhero and you're not, you know, professionally great at talking to sellers. Yeah. Well, P folks, if you haven't realized now, Pace is a giver. He is giving back. Pace, where do you want to send people to go check out? Obviously, you have a YouTube channel, lots of uh, great stuff going on there. Where do you want to send them? Because you put out amazing stuff. For people who want to learn a little bit more, I, I've done eight hours of free training already on my YouTube channel for Gator Lending. So if you just, you literally don't even have to type in Pace. Like I've, it's a, it's a strategy I created. Um, and you just type in Gator Lending and it, all four videos pop up. Awesome, folks. This is amazing stuff. And again, the, the crazy thing about all of this is lots of people that watch this channel, I talk about, you know, your freedom number. And it's, it's amazing how many folks can, their number's 3,000 bucks. You do one. Know, bro, isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. One Gator loan, step one, a month. Yep. You're there. And they, they happen so, cool. so quickly. So like today I'm doing a training at 10 a.m. with my the people who are in the little Gator tribe that I created. It's a free tribe. I just like people who are serious about it. I'm doing training. Last night on one of my Q and A's with one of my, you know, with my sub two students, um, Heather Witzig, she comes in she goes, Pace, I've got four Gator loans. I'm like, holy crap, Heather, like the training on Gator lending has not <laughs> even really truly started. You've already got four loans. She's like, yeah, I'm gonna make like $16,000 this week. Nice. Meanwhile, she hasn't, she's never done a real estate transaction. She's having a hard time getting herself inserted in a wholesale deal or a fix and flip mm -hmm. or what have you. Meanwhile, she's got a couple thousand dollars and this is what I taught her to do because a lot of people don't have the cash. Mm. So I go, I'll show you how to take a credit card, swipe it on like Stripe or not Stripe, but uh, plastique.com. Mm. Plastique will send you a check at kind of like a cash advance for your credit card use that credit card. She made $16,000 off lending money off her credit cards this week. Wow. She got all the money back. Now she's like, now I've got 16 grand and to just go out and just keep co compounding, compounding, compounding. So if you're out there, guys, there's a lot of ways to make money in real estate and $3,000 a month is pretty simple to do if you just do a couple of Gator loans or one for that. Just matter. one. Yeah. Folks, yeah. you got to follow Pace Morby. He is the man, clearly amazing stuff. Thanks, brother. Yeah.